Vegas. What's going on, man? AD with 98.5 KL. You see, we are Las Vegas' number one hit music station. That is a fact. Tonight in the building, my dog, my homie, Richie Griffin. How awkward is this for you right now? Oh, my God. I'm trying, I'm trying not to look at the camera because I just spent the last 30 seconds obviously walking around the room so changing things. There's, there's more than 30 seconds for sure, um, yeah. but I'll let you have that one. I, I try um, to be nice. So, 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 you're, so you're you're always behind the camera. Uh huh. So this right now, and we've only done this one other time, but not in this, uh, you weren't controlling the camera. So, yeah. but how, like, is awkward on a scale of one to 10? Uh, like a uh, 30. I want to go check the cameras <laughs> right now and make sure they're running. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for being on camera. I know you wouldn't do this for everybody, so I appreciate uh-huh. you. Um, you're uh, you're a master of visuals. I said it. I said it. You don't have to agree, but I will say it. That's, that's your title. You're a master of visuals and many more. I won't, so I'm okay. glad you um, said it. You do commercials. You do music videos. You do uh, sporting events, football, basketball, um, Charger Henderson, Henderson Cowboys, um, documentaries, docu-series. Um, you do anything that involves a camera. Photography, too. Um, when when did you get started using the camera? Like what, what got you into it? I think that the first time I started using a camera was when I went to college, and I went to college because I was really into music, and that degree wasn't available and the closest thing was a digital media production degree. Right. Um, so, you know, I went to work on that to get access to the things I wanted to use and obviously ended up developing a love for both. Um, and obviously, I still do both professionally now. Facts. Because you do you do audio, you you do yeah. like uh, voice, vocal production, um, voiceovers, commercials, yeah. things of that nature. Um, but then you obviously do visuals full go. Um, you yeah. work for Terrible Herbs. Yep. And your title with Terrible Herbs is? Director of Media Assets. I'm okay. basically a content producer. Okay. Got you. Yeah. That makes sense for what you do. So yeah. like if you're the person and you're getting gas and you hear someone talk to you, that's 99 times out of 100 me. Yes. It scared me one time um, when I forgot that you were that person on the pump. I, I don't always look at the gas station I go to. Um, forgive me. Uh, I just pulled up one time. And I'm like, oh, that's Richie's voice. Oh, yeah. snap. Where's he at? Oh, he's on the gas pump. Okay, let me text yeah. him. Put it on my Inst- Instagram story. Um, so super dope. Um, you mentioned music. You used, to, you used to be a rapper. I did. I did a lot of things. <laughs> I've, done things in, I've done things in my life. I'm trying to keep this a conversation that we know we're having on camera and not one that we would have yeah. off camera. No, um, I mean, I, I did some things that I'm proud of no, no, that, yeah, yeah. That, I, that I don't mind showing people. Absolutely. But what, yeah, what, that was something I did. What, <laughs> sorry. What, what, um, why did you stop making music? I should say there were, there were a couple reasons. And w- one was that I started, I actually started boxing and I boxed a lot. Wow. For, you know, three or three and a half years. That's how I met Cody. Got you. <clears throat> Shout out to Cody Crowley. What's up? The Crippler. So when I started boxing, I don't think I do anything less than 100%. So I was like going 100 for a, a long while. Um, and, and that's a large reason of why I stopped. The other part was once I got to, you know, the finishing part of my college, it, it had to be like an all focus kind of thing. And then by the time I graduated college, I obviously already had kids. So I was like, you know, when, when, I don't know how, like, you, know, we, you spoke to Jovi Jove. I don't know how he does it. With <laughs> I, I don't understand it at all, but man, um, I've probably done two or three tracks since my kids have been born. So that's like 10 years. So. Right. So it, be, being a music head, do you, or, or having having made music, do you have a, do you have a certain uh, certain genre or certain artist that you listen to like uh, more more than others when you do have time to listen to music? You know, as as far as rap goes? Um, music in general. I mean, I don't, I, I don't mess with anything from today. I just I, I just don't. <laughs> right. Not, no, I I, I'm not saying it's bad. I just don't. I'm not into it. My right. kids are. Um, but I listen to a lot more of like alternative type of music when I'm just kind of browsing. Obviously, I listen to 98.5, but when I'm just picking my own music, that's right. that's usually what I end up on. Your voice is also on 98.5. Yeah, it is shout sometimes. Out, shout and, out to all the- and more recently than ever, people have actually noticed and asked it- me about it, which is... Is that your voice? Yeah, they do. It was like, I, hey, I heard something on 98.5. It's, it, you sound like a weirdo, but I thought it was you. <laughs> I think and, you sound you know, great. Like, sure enough. Yeah, um, no, I appreciate and I'm, it. And I'm not gassing you either um, from from producer, producer. Like, I, I think you sound amazing. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, and it, that actually, it means a lot when when people say that. So it does. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm, I'm uh, a fan of all, all I've the done, way well. I've done a lot of voice work lately. Like, a lot more than I ever thought I would do in my life. Right. Uh, I started voicing for a viral video company called Bestie. Okay. And it's like, it's funny things. It's like Zodiac signs that work well together and 10 signs that your liver's failing or or whatever. Things right. like that. 
Um, but honestly, I, I really enjoy doing it. I, I don't know. I don't know why it's not, it's nothing. It's not like groundbreaking, but I just enjoy doing it. That's all that matters. One, and one of them almost has a million views. So I'll count that. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll count that as a success. You're going to be a viral sensation here. I certainly hope so <laughs> yes. because everybody needs to know which Zodiac pairings work well together. <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> um, so we just got done talking to Jovi Jove and Goliath Cruz. They have a project out called self-sufficient. Um, I think this goes hand in hand with what you do and who you are um you a lot of your work um outside of terrible is you do a lot of stuff on your own um freelance work what what have you it's all it all comes from like your own equipment mm -hmm. your audio production your at home mm -hmm. like how how important would you say it is to be self-sufficient in 2018 i mean it's i guess it's one of those fine lines it's really easy to say you want to do everything yourself which i am 100 percent guilty of that that's why i know what i know is because uh, when I was 16, someone told me Pro Tools is what you need to learn. Right. So I went and learned it. And, you know, and even after you get a degree in film, you don't know everything. Everything changes every six months. So obviously you need to learn that. You have to continually work at it. Adapt. But there, there is a point where you can be shooting yourself in the foot trying to do things for yourself um, where there are people who want to help you get to your goals. Right. Which is funny that I say that because that's who I am for yes. different people. For me. Is like, yeah, like had you just said, no, I, I, I'm just going to do it all myself, then we would never have, you know, this this type of relationship that we do. So I, I thought about this prior to our conversation too. I'm like, we're going to talk about this too. Um, first of all, um, I'm, I'm nothing behind the camera. Um, I can I can do very small things that, uh, that, that work out for what I need to do for them. Um, I mean, you posted a really good, dance video i'm done with it. i'm done with the dead arm yeah, dance i mean it was great shout out to paulie man he's yeah. uh he's the curator behind all of that he was probably the best one if everybody <laughs> could just focus on him <laughs> but i mean there's there's things like uh there, there's 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 so many things like even these interviews that we do um from like and i don't know i almost said ph balance as if it was like skin but like the i know but like the white balance or like the color balance yeah. between like you use two different cameras and mm -hmm. i don't know what i'm saying right here but you get what i'm saying no i know what you're saying you're like, saying the balance of color between it, the two cameras to make them match but yeah these the, yeah. and these are these are small th they're big things but like there are things that i would have no idea of how to adjust or like personally yeah. have any like interest in figuring out how to adjust so for me being self-sufficient isn't always like i get i think there's a weakness and like a strength to being yeah. doing everything on your own um if i try to do all that on my own i'd be time I'd, I'd be wasting my time i feel like all my time and effort be towards that whereas yeah. okay i know richie this works out perfectly let's come together yeah. i can Hey, Richie to do this and it's a beautiful thing and I don't have to worry about touching anything whereas Richie knows exactly what he's doing how to make this yeah. perfect it's beautiful well, and, and then your job becomes focusing on on what you're doing the interview or you the know, event whatever that we're at is, right you know whereas you you kind of spread yourself thin if you do things and that's the same in film like in film there's there's a person who lights there's a person who literally just goes and gets things so that person can focus on lighting. Okay. You know what I mean? There's a person who focuses the camera. There's a person who frames it. And then there's a director who just sits back and makes sure that everybody's doing it in a way that's cohesive. Right. So you're talking about like five people within five feet of each other that even now, you know, we're doing all of those jobs. So you can break it down and that's how you become, you know, so... Uh, that's how you get such a professional product right is by letting people focus on what they need to be great at okay uh, but at the same time there's always there's there's always something to be said for a thirst for knowledge right um you know while while not spreading yourself too thin do you think you spread yourself too thin all time okay <laughs> all time <laughs> I was gonna say yes but I don't obviously yeah, not with you 24 7 but. but at the same I, I guess you know I I try to keep my projects something that for one, make me feel fulfilled and that I want to be successful at. Right. Um, where I become too thin is where I have, obviously, you know, that the whole football thing is, is, is a large amount of time. And then, you know, the work that I do voicing for Bestie is a large amount of time. And obviously I have a full-time job that, that is always the focus <laughs> is to grow the company. Um, and then, you know, we pick up things in between those and eventually there's just not enough minutes in an hour or hours in a day or yes. days in a week. <laughs> that's where, that's where I, but that's all a balanced thing. And, uh, 
And, you know, I, I don't feel like I've really reached the limit yet. But, yeah, sometimes I do feel like I've spread myself. I mean, thing. you're you're a goer. There's times where I don't know, like, how or when you sleep. I mean, you've got you've got, you've got got three beautiful boys, a uh, yeah. beautiful, beautiful wife, beautiful family. You've got a dog, too, in there. Yeah. Um, and you're doing all these things. You had to throw the dog. And dog's a responsibility as well. Um, yeah. uh, and you're doing all these things, but you but you make it happen. I think that's the biggest thing is you figure it out and you make it happen. Yeah. I from what I see, from what I, from the outside of looking into Richie Griffin's life, you yeah. make it all happen. I think it's different. It depends on on what you got going on. I feel like this is a good example of the, the people that you interview here. If you want it, you need to go get it. Facts. You have to just go get it. Yes. Uh, I think films a lot like that, and it's not necessarily like there's you just got to outwork everybody. It's not necessarily that. It's it's just exploring your craft and finding out what you're good at, what you're comfortable at, and you know, uh, being able to put yourself in a creative space so that you can continue growing. Um, until you find your niche of where you're supposed to be. Right. And I don't know if you ever actually find that, but you're supposed to not stop looking. I know yes. that. <laughs> yes. so, so that's just kind of what I've done. So we've spoken before, and I know that your favorite thing to shoot is is, is the football games, yeah. um, I believe, right? Henderson yeah. Cowboys. I mean, obviously football in general, but you, your boys play football, so that's a, yeah. that works hand in hand. Yep. Um, what is something that you haven't done that you want to get, to, get into? You know, I... I don't think it's necessarily something I haven't done, but it's at a level I haven't done it. Okay. So, you know, obviously I've shot I've shot tons and tons of commercials. I've made tons of motion graphics commercials and voiced them, but I would love to put myself in a position where, um, you know, I have that team of people to rely on mm -hmm. to put in different positions to make sure that we get the most professional product we can. Okay. Um, so that then I can understand the difference between what I do and what they do. Right. Um, and that's that. That's the end goal. I don't, I don't know how close I am to that, but there's people out there that I know that um, I would love to just kind of you know grab on their coattails and just see how they do it, right? Um, just to understand. So, do you want to create like a a, a media based company essentially, or you know, I don't, you know, I don't really like. To me, I feel like that's a that's a box. Okay. And but yeah, it's a, it, obviously it is a media based company, but I don't want to say I'm a production company or a creative agency like because uh, I, I i'm not one of those people yet like you, people call me with a problem and if i can provide a solution i can provide a solution and that's kind of how i've found myself in the situation i am now right but i don't know if i feel comfortable saying like i'm a creative agency and coca-cola can call me and i'll give them the answer because I don't feel comfortable saying that. I think you can. I think you can produce what someone's looking for, though. If they give you yeah. a, a a direction, I think you can take that and go and make it happen. So yeah. I, I could see you being a, a production company, or that might put you in a box. Though I see what you're saying. Okay. It's just a levels thing. I feel like there, we do what I'm used to doing is not having a budget and making something that people can confuse with great advertising. Okay, yeah, that's, that's my goal. Right. So. To have that budget, to have that big budget is a lot of pressure. And I think without ever being with someone who's done it that way, I wouldn't feel comfortable taking someone's money to do it. I would be like okay. that guy where they're like, hey, we have a $50,000 budget. He's like, well, if you can give me 10, I'll get it done for you. Like I would be that person. Okay. So I, I guess that's that's kind of what I, but I, I've done a really good job thus far in my career of not having anything and giving people Something that they say, hey, I, I, I feel like, you know, you guys really upped your game. And it's like, oh, well, thanks. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, uh, you you do the damn thing. Um, speaking of like people like uh, or, or maybe putting a team together someday, um, who are the ones that influence you? Like, are there like do you have a favorite movie director, a favorite music video director or like <clears throat> creative? I would say maybe not even anyone that shoots video, maybe someone you just look up to that inspires no, you. There's a lot like I. I just pay attention to people that I, I can, I feel like I can relate to as far as, um, you know, what they create and what I create. And there's like, uh, someone like Ryan Connolly, Ryan Connolly does some production work. He's done some phenomenal short films and he's trying to make his way to a full length feature and, and people who would know that name understand why I would, I would, you know, relate to that. I do like, uh, Shane Hurlbut, Shane, Shane Hurlbut is a massive director uh, director of photography but he constantly is giving back to the film community in terms of you know um he has this inner circle that you can be a part of where they just constantly feed you knowledge and and talk about how they achieved the things they achieved i'd say those two off the top would be really close and we could go into big directors but at the same point it would just be me saying like oh 
Steven Spielberg's good I, because he yes. sprinkles magic on everything. But, you know, like those are probably the ones that are the most relatable. Okay. <clears throat> Copy that. Now we have this bucket in front of you. Cram's bucket, which you've seen a million times. Um, yours is a little light. Um, it's kind of different than everybody else's um, just because of who you are. Uh, we're going to take it to the equipment side of things. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick, a, you're gonna pick a, a, a piece of paper out. You're going to read what the piece, paper, piece of paper says. Too many P's going on. Um, and then you're going to uh, give your first thought to whatever that piece of paper says. So let's do it. Cram's bucket, Richie Griffin. Ah. Scarlet. Yes. So just the first thing I think of when I say Scarlet. Yeah. Scarlet uh, Pro. Is that what they're called? I don't know. <laughs> no, you've, you, I think you would know what I'm talking about. The Scarlet oh. Pro, it's an audio interface. Oh, see, I'm thinking about your camera with the red or whatever. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you Mind you, I don't know the camera stuff that well, so, you have, so work with me. Yeah. Um, Nikon camera. Okay. How would you okay? How would you rate these brands? That's what I. That's what I'm getting at here. I mean, like, do you have a do you have a favorite like yeah brand to work with? I like to work with a Red camera, and after okay. that, it'd probably be a Canon, and then a Sony, and then an Icon. Can okay, go sit in a corner. Okay, facts. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, you got it. You got it. Canon. Obviously, it's the most user-friendly camera out there. Okay, there we go. That's what I, are we other attributes of these cameras that you yeah, find? Okay, I mean, uh, Canon has beautiful skin tones, but there are so many on the market that you can go to any pawn shop and buy thirteen for twelve dollars. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then Sony, if uh, if you're a video person, you understand that it makes everybody's skin tones green, but you use it because it's cheaper than Canon. Okay, all right. <laughs> hey, no, see there, there we go. Fact. This, okay, but this, this sparked out. Um. So what do you do? What's your favorite piece of equipment? Um, I don't know. I mean, my favorite piece of equipment is the one I haven't bought yet. <laughs> Which is what? I mean, anything. Like I look at like before I had a Canon, I wanted a Sony. Then I got a okay. Sony and I wanted a Red. Now I have a Red and I want an Ari. It's just like, it's, 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 it's a never ending. It's nonstop. Yeah, it really is. It's terrible for my uh, financial well-being, but... Uh, you can't help but look at something you haven't used before and imagine how it's going to give you something something different that you didn't already have, which right. is definitely, now that I say it out loud, is just ri ridiculous. But but you can't help but imagine it's going to. Right. Microphones are the same way. You look at a microphone you don't have, it's like $13,000, and you're like, that's got to make me sound great. I need that one. Yeah, I'm going to sound great <laughs> if I get that one. And then you get it, and you're like, well... Maybe it wasn't the right pop filter. Right. Maybe a different pop filter. I would rather have that $13,000 <laughs> yeah. back in my bank account. Was, yeah. Facts. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite software program that you like to use? Oh, yeah. I use the Adobe Cloud uh, across the board with the exception of audio. I use uh, Pro Tools. Okay. I've always just been most comfortable in Pro Tools because I've spent just a lifetime using it. That reads? Yeah. Facts. What advice would you give to someone um, just getting started in 2018 uh, doing what you do as far as like visuals are concerned, camera work? Yeah, if it's camera work, the the most obvious answer is just do. You don't, you'll never feel comfortable. You okay. just have to do. Um, and it's kind of cliche because that's what they tell you in school and you don't listen until you right. just start doing it. Yes. But um, I would just do something that you don't mind doing or that, I, you know, like check an idea with a friend and you're like, I, I want to do this. or like, no, that's terrible. I want to do this. That's kind of cool. Let's go do that. Boom. You know, once that's done, let's go do that. You just kind of keep checking yourself to make sure you're growing, but you just got to do things. It's not necessarily for money or for, you know, Figure out I what mean, you if like. it's your craft and it's, if you're, that's what you're, there's people out there that just want to go get money. And if that's your case, you don't need any motivation. But right. if, if your goal is to be good at something, you just have to start doing it and then go a little further each time. Facts. So I think, I think that, that's, that's what I would say. Um, and, uh, and, and, uh, what is the, what is the next venture for Richie Griffin? Gosh, I, I really don't know. I've done, I've found myself doing so much voice work that I, I really would like to see how much further that can go. Uh, as far as uh, video work, I feel like there's, I, I find much more gratification out of helping someone grow than I do out of imagining a project being finished. Okay. So I guess my next, obviously I've really enjoyed helping, you know, the Henderson Cowboys. I've really enjoyed helping, you know, National Youth Sports Nevada. Um, but, you know, there's, they're small business owners that that always need help but can't necessarily afford what 
you know we are talking about right and i i feel like that would be a fun thing for me to to find a small business owner that uh that i enjoy helping and literally just climb on board and go 100 percent the way Boom. you know i do with most things straight up 110 percent um do you have a favorite project of all time you've worked on so not favorite area to do we know you like the henderson cowboys and that's but like favorite project i mean i think I think my favorite project I've done thus far is probably the docu series for Cody. Okay, I feel like that it, was hard. It came out really well, and obviously he gives him and Ibn both give me just this incredibly long leash to be creative. And sometimes we show up, and I'm looking for direction, and they're like, "I don't know, you're the video guy. Just do what you do. <laughs> yes. You do good things. Just do it." That's you know? how I feel. But, but I really do. Uh, I I really do like the way that project. Uh, Ha- has turned out even start to finish from the very beginning to now because some of it becomes very poetic and it feels you know it feels right when you watch it so um yeah i think that would be my favorite one Boom. there i mean there are some commercial projects out there that i've done that i'm very proud of but that's that's probably as a whole just as a chunk of things that i've done that's the yeah that that'd be best practice for me i think do you ever want to shoot like a movie or like a uh a- you know, I feel like a movie feels so overwhelming to think about, but to to come out with like a really, really good short um, to, you know, kind of put out there to show people that I can probably, you know, emulate a lot of what I see um, with less of a crew than than most people do. That would be fun. I, I, I don't know. I guess I just get a kick out of fooling people into thinking that there's <laughs> more going on than there is, you know. Theater of the mind. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Um, and where can the people follow you at, man? Uh, it's Rich Griff. Everywhere. Instagram, Everywhere. Twitter, I believe Facebook. Yeah. Call me a liar. Yeah. Richie Griffin page. I don't know what the, I don't know what the backslash yeah, is. I just Richie type in Richie Griffin page. page. I can go change it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how awkward is it going to be for you to edit this interview? Oh, absolutely horrible. <laughs> I'll probably blur my face for the first 30 seconds. I'm going to cut out anything that feels just too unbearable. But I'm going to leave just the right amount of awkward in there. Okay, please. Yeah, thanks. I, well, I'll, I'll get a kick out of it. Uh-huh. Um, um, first of all, thank you for doing this. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I appreciate you uh, putting this on wax. Um, and if you do need any type of visual, I'm selling you right now, Richie, any, whatever, it is, whatever it may be, uh, videos, event recaps, weddings, photos, whatever it is, anything behind the camera, this is your guy right here, I Richie really, Griffin. I really hope you were in frame for that whole thing because I really want to go check it just to make sure, but I'm sure you're good. There we go. <laughs> Richie Griffin, my dog.